Hey everybody, my name is John Cochelle, and I'm going to be giving you some free martial arts lessons. Today, I'd first like to start talking to you about how to use a single stick. Now, it's very important that when we talk about a stick, to understand that I'm actually talking about a weapon that is longer than, say, your cell phone, but it's also not sharp. We generally tend to break things up into sharp weapons and weapons that are impact tools. A stick is just a facsimile or a training dummy that really represents anything that I could put my hand into and it's used to train our bodies how to move correctly. So it's not, you don't need to get too hung up on whether or not you have an actual rattan stick. Okay, you could use a piece of cut off broom handle. You could use an ax handle. If you get one of those at a local hardware shop. You could use a little league or a t-ball aluminum bat I've used before. Uh, or um, how about an extension from your vacuum cleaner. You could easily hold that, extend that out to whatever length you want and use that in the same fashion. It doesn't matter. For our purposes, it really doesn't matter. What's important is that you get a weapon in your hand, some kind of tool in your hand, and you start learning how to use it. Now, why, if I'm talking about beginning martial arts, we're we talking about a weapon. Most often in traditional Chinese, uh, Japanese, Korean martial arts, you would start out learning empty hands, and then after years and years and years of training those forms and those different styles, you would actually move on to the weapons skill. In Southeast Asia, the Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, they tend to do things the other way around. They start with the weapon because the weapon is going to help you to develop attributes much quicker. What do we mean by attributes? That's a fantastic question. Attributes are the things that your body needs to be able to move better, quicker, and respond more appropriately if you actually need it in any given situation. So what would be some attributes? Explosive speed, power, endurance, coordination, footwork, body mechanics, how well you can use your body, educated eyes, can you see things coming and do you know what that means? Line familiarization, knowing where to move so that you move away from a threat. All these things are something that we'll talk about much more in greater detail later. What's important now is that you actually get up and start moving your body. So I'm gonna be teaching you a series of basic exercises to get you to start to learn to have fluency expressing yourself through a different medium than maybe you're used to. It's important that you can actually move yourself and the weapon naturally. And the weapon has to naturally uh, move like it's part of your body. What do I mean by this? If you're actually afraid or in a situation where you have to use a weapon to defend yourself, God forbid that ever happens, but if you do, if you have to think about how to make this thing work while you're trying to deal with a threat, you're going to have a split mind and you're not actually going to be able to do your best. No, you need to be able to move and understand without thought how this works. And the way we do that is through a series of repetitive exercises that actually train your body how to work from muscle memory, how to do it without thought, how to make it just become natural movement for you. So let's begin. These basic exercises I'm gonna be teaching you today come from the Filipino martial arts specifically, although they can be found in other areas as well. My reference point is from the Filipino martial arts from a guru, guru Daniel Inasanto, uh, as well as some of his top students, Rick Fay, Paul Vunak, and some others that uh, I've been able to have blessed to be trained with. So let's get moving, shall we? So what you need to do is get yourself some kind of an implement. And again, I've even had people send me pictures of doing them with things from their kitchen. It doesn't matter. Something in your hand to help you understand how to move and how to move your body, okay? So it can even be spatulas from the kitchen. Typically, you'll see different kinds of lengths and different kinds of diameters. I typically like to use a stick that's between a half an inch and a three quarters of an inch in diameter and between no shorter than 24 inches and typically no longer than 30, 32. Some systems will do 36, 40 inch longer sticks. 
We tend to stick around 26, 28 inch stick seems to work really, really good for us. So, when you grip a stick for our training, some schools will teach that you actually grab the very end, saying that you have more reach and more leverage because you have the end of the lever. That's true. It also will not allow you to get someone behind here and strip this out of your hand. Other systems may teach even as far as way up in the middle. That's a little bit too long for us, so what we teach is a hand width from the bottom. I'm going to grip. Now when I grip, it's primarily with my thumb and my middle two fingers. Those are primarily my gripping fingers. The other two are there. I'm not going to let them be open, but they're more loose. And so the result is I can become a little bit more whip-like with the weapon, with the stick. It becomes a little more whip instead of stiff. If I hold it stiff, and it's stiff in my arm and it doesn't move at all. So I want to be able to develop a little bit of a whipping motion with the stick, okay? And that allows that to do that. Never do we want to open our hand and twirl with this like this, okay? You'll twirl eventually, but your hand will still be tightly gripped and your wrist will become loose and your body mechanics will be such that you'll be able to do it, but we'll get to that later. When you're learning motion, when you're learning any new skill, it helps to be able to quantify it and name it. When you name something and quantify it, you can easily reference it and come back to it. We do it the same way in the Filipino martial arts. When we look at an attack, generally we don't look at it as how you're being attacked, but the angle from which you're being attacked. And so we name those angles accordingly. The number one way in the world statistically you could possibly be attacked is by a right-hander kind of a motion inward like this. It could be a haymaker punch, it could be just a straight punch, it could be a karate chop kind of thing. It could be someone trying to hit you with a stick. Okay, but that right-handed shot from your temple, 45 degree angle down to your hip, we call that an angle number one. So if I do that towards the camera, it would look like this. Now generally we want to stay at about a 45 degree angle, and I want to stay pretty much within the box that is my upper body and my head. I don't want the weapon going far away from my body because look, there's nothing between me and the bad guy now. I want that to stay relatively tight. Now you'll notice a couple of things here. My feet, I generally put the weapon hand forward because I want to have that between me and the bad guy. This comes from fencing kind of arts, okay? Secondly, the hand that doesn't have a weapon is gonna park right over my heart on my sternum. This is very simply because we're gonna be teaching you how to actually hit a hand if it comes out, and you don't wanna have your hand out getting smashed. So your hand is gonna stay right here. This also puts it in the perfect position to be able to reach either side or the head, either side of my body or my head very quickly. If my hand is all the way down here, it takes a lot longer time to get it all the way up here and so forth. So here, it's kind of equidistant from all sides, okay? So now, when we name these angles, we also name families or groupings of motions that look similar so we can understand them and remember them. The first family of motions we're gonna look at is called the figure eight family. From the figure eight family, we're only gonna look at one today, and it's gonna be the downward figure eight, otherwise called an X. Some system would call this Equis, okay, an X. And you'll notice the tip of the stick goes straight through about my nose and about my nose. I want the point that I hit to be exactly the same on every one of the shots. I'm trying to develop accuracy with where I deliver my shot. That's important. If you can't hit what you're aiming at, good luck to you. You're not gonna have a lot of good luck, okay? Not gonna have a lot of success. So, I wanna be thinking about accuracy. Now, when I start to move, I'm gonna turn my shoulder and my hip slightly, okay? And I want you to just begin doing this with me now, and I'm gonna lead you through some exercises, okay? So if you haven't yet, get up, get a little bit of room, get something in your hand, even if it's a pen, even if it's the remote control of your TV. Okay, stand up and begin to move. 
Okay, and I'm gonna go one, two, one, two. Remember how I said this is an angle number one? In many systems, this is an angle number two. One, backhand two. One, two, one, two. Now you notice, I'm hitting out two, one, two. I'm not hitting across my body. I'm hitting out to a point, out, okay? One, two, one, two. So let's just go ahead and do a few of these. I'm gonna count off 20, okay? One, two, three. Where's that alive hand? We call this the alive hand. Five, six, seven, tighten it up just a little bit, eight, nine, 10, good, 20, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, watch the tip, 17, should go through the same point, 19, and 20. Very good. Now, if I can hit downward and backhand, I can also hit downward and come back on the same line. So I can hit one, two, I can hit on that same line, can I? Notice I'm not coming all the way down here. I'm stopping and coming right back, okay? Using my wrist to pull back the end of the weapon. I can also do it on the other side, okay? So now we start to do that. I just start to hit, right? Sometimes I hit, hit, and then come through, right? Hit, hit, then come through. Hit, hit, come. Hit, hit, come through. Hit, hit, come through. Hit, hit, come through. Hit, hit, come through. All of my impact should be landing at about the same point in space, in the air. Okay, so you begin to just get used to moving your body. Notice my elbow stays relatively close. The weapon goes out and hits. I don't need to put my arm out there. Okay, if I'm gonna move closer to hit him, I move my feet so that I can hit him. All right, speaking of footwork, let's take a little bit of footwork right now. The first pattern I want you to learn is something called the female triangle, the open female triangle. When we look at our footwork on the ground, the open female triangle, open because it's not closed in the front, it's gonna be the point back towards me and then 45 degree angles forward. So it will look something like this. 60 degree angle to 90 degree angle, somewhere in there, okay? And then when I step, the, both of my feet are at the point I'm gonna step forward, my whole body comes forward, and then step back, my feet come back together again. Step forward, my shoulders turn, my hips turn, bring the feet back together. Step, back, step, back, step, back. Now you notice I lowered myself slightly. This should be an athletic motion, okay? Don't do it with stiff, straight legs, okay? Get down slightly, you don't need to be too far down, but get down slightly and move, 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 okay? Open female triangle. The male triangle has the point forward and I can either move back on the line like this or I can just step. We're gonna do this next time. Right now let's stick on the forward female triangle. Okay, now let's put that stick work together with the footwork. Okay, so I start with my right hand, feet are together. I'm gonna step off, and all I want you to do is one, two. Come to the center, left, one, two. Right, one, two. Left, one, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two, bring the feet together. One, two, one, two, good. One, two, back with me now. One, two, one, two, one, two, 
One, two. I'm assuming you're doing this with me. You can learn real skill through the internet. Yes, you'll have to get instruction in person. Yes, you'll have to work with the body. But you can start learning basic skills this medium. No problem. You can start learning basic angles. You can start working up a sweat and building up your muscles through the internet just like this. I'm sweating. I'm in a room in Thailand. It's hot. Don't have an AC in here. And I'm starting to feel it. Okay? So, when I step, I can do two on the same line if I want. One, two. That angle number one. One, two. I can do two on the other side. Easy. You just start now to play. The key is you do it. Okay? One, two. One, two. One, two. Bring it through. One, two. Bring it through. One, two. One, two. One, two. Now I can add a third two in the back. One, two. 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 Okay? You start to see the point. Now, let's get the left hand involved in the party, shall we? So, when I'm doing my drill, I'll just take the feet out of it for right now and make it easier for you. I'm going to go one, two. When the stick comes back to this side, I flip it straight over my shoulder, reach underneath and grab it, hit out, and then one, two. One, two. One, two. Same thing. Okay? One, two. Two on this side. Two on this side. Bring it back. One, two. One, two. Okay, when I'm ready, I flip the stick over, reach underneath and grab it, hit out, and then I'm back on this side. Back in my right hand. Okay, so I'm hitting, 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 hitting. At any time I'm ready to, I flip the stick over my shoulder, reach underneath and grab it, hit out, and then I'm back in my pattern again. My downward X pattern. Okay? Over the top, hit back out. One, two. One, two. Now, easy, right? Let's put it into a drill. Okay? I want you to hit twice as you step forward. It doesn't matter how you hit. You can hit twice here. I can hit twice here on my first step. I can hit twice here. I can hit twice and bring it back. I can start on this side and bring it back. I can hit here, or I can hit here. When I step to the other side, hit twice. Then bring it back and switch. Hit out. One, two. One, two. Come again. One, two. Hit twice. Bring it out. Bring it back. One, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Bring it back, get out. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Get it out, okay? So the pattern is you step off and you hit two strikes. Come back to center, step off and you hit two strikes. You do that twice. Then when you come back, you switch. And now I'm hitting with my left hand. Left hand, left hand, left hand, switch. Right hand, right hand, right hand, right hand, switch. Left hand, left hand, left hand, left hand, switch. Right hand. Like so, okay? And you play with it. And what I want you to do is build up your fluency, your fluidity, and your speed, okay? This is going to help build your body. It's going to help build strength in your lower body. It's going to help build balance as you build that strength in motion. And even if you've never 
done martial arts before, even if you haven't trained in a long time, you can get up and start working along with these videos and you're going to gain skill very quickly. Eventually, we'll be doing things with a partner. So you're going to want to get your spouse, your children, your partner involved with you and do this together. Our heart is to be able to share these skills with everyday normal people and take away the mystique and maybe the intimidation and fear of going to a school or maybe there isn't even one in your area. We want to be able to give you the opportunity and the freedom to train at your own time, at your own speed, whenever you want, wherever you want, have the resource and be able to just follow along and build the skill, okay? For more information on how you can further this training, check the links below. See you soon. New video in a couple of days.